G'day everyone and welcome back to our paranormal world. What's the scariest thing that you can think of happening to your body after death? Or at least something you'd really not like? Unless you're thinking of one of those truly dodgy things serial killers do to their victims, then it's probably on this list. From being exhumed every few years and dressed up and taken to a party, to being suspended hundreds of feet in the air in a coffin, or left for wildlife to devour, there are enormous differences in how various cultures of the world deal with and revere their dead. And I've collected 10 of the best here. Number 10, Ritualistic Cannibalism. There are several cultures around the world who have been recorded as practicing some form of ritualistic cannibalism of the dead. From New Guinea to South America and even Australia, ceremonies where the dead are physically and symbolically absorbed into the living are actually pretty common. From eating portions of flesh to consuming ashes, this practice is thought to enhance the connection with the deceased and it's especially important when the departed person was a leader or an elder of the tribe. Indigenous Australians were known to cover bodies with leaves and dirt and leave them to rot. The liquid from decomposing bodies would be rubbed into the skin of children an act which was thought to pass on positive qualities, skills and attributes to the next generation. After decomposition, the bones would be relocated to burial caves. Number 9. The Manene Festival in Indonesia Although you may not recognise the name, you have probably heard mention of the Manene Festival in Sulawesi, Indonesia. It's a festival celebrated by the Tajaran people on the island and reportedly dates back more than a century. The practice began in the village of Barupu, where a hunter stumbled upon a corpse which had been abandoned and was decaying under a tree. This hunter dressed the corpse in his own clothes and gave the corpse a proper burial. After that, he was said to have been blessed with good fortune. So the practice was adopted by the Taraja, who believed the spirits of the dead would reward them for taking good care of them, and the Manene festival was born. It takes place every three years and translates to the ceremony of cleaning corpses. During the festival, folks will exhume the dead, groom them and dress them in newer, more fashionable clothes. The coffins are fixed or replaced as necessary and the corpses themselves are paraded around the village, moving only in straight lines. It's believed that the straight lines connect them with Hyung, a supernatural powerful entity who only moves in straight lines. As you can probably imagine, funerals in this part of Indonesia are rather elaborate affairs, with the living frequently going into debt to pay for the extravagant celebrations, which is said to strengthen the bond between the living and the dead. The funeral lasts for several days and begins with the slaughter of buffaloes and pigs, which ensure a peaceful afterlife. The animals are put through a series of rigorous trials of their strength before sacrifice and their horns are placed outside the home of the deceased. The more horns which decorate the property, the higher the status of the departed. Perhaps strangely, the body of a newly deceased person doesn't actually attend their funeral in spite of them attending the festivities in later years. A body will initially be placed in a stone cave atop a cliff until the completion of the funeral and then it will begin its journey to the land of souls. While in these stone caves, the person is referred to as asleep 
because they don't truly believe them to be dead until they're actually buried. Once the funeral's over, the body's placed in a coffin and entombed in a liang. And it is from these rock tombs where the body is taken for the three yearly festival. If a child from this village dies prior to teething, its body is placed in a specially carved hole in a tree trunk, and it's believed the soul will become one with the spirit of the tree as the tree heals. Number eight, Fumadihana. In Madagascar, a similar ceremony is held, which is known as Fumadihana, or the turning of the bones. The Malagasy people believe decomposition is a crucial step in the afterlife, which actually does make a bit of sense when you think about it. But to aid this process, the tombs are opened every seven years. The bodies are covered in cloth and taken to celebrations where there's dancing and feasting in honor of the dead. Number seven the cliff coffins of Lubao, China. The only remnant of the Bo people, a Chinese ethnic minority who were exterminated by the Ming Dynasty in China over 400 years ago, is these strange coffins nailed onto the side of a cliff, high above farmlands below. Although hanging burial has been practiced throughout parts of China for centuries, it is certainly not the way modern Chinese deal with the bodies of their loved ones using ground burial today. Very little is known about the Bo people or how these coffins would have been interred in this way. Several theories have been explored with attempts at recreating the feat However, it continues to puzzle historians. Number six, the Daini people of West Papua. The Daini tribes of West Papua live in the central highlands of Papua New Guinea. And in 2016, this photo stunned the world. It shows a tribal chief holding the mummified remains of a tribal ancestor. The tribe used smoke mummification to preserve the corpses of elders and retain their bodies in the village. The Dani are also known for their practice of amputating portions of the fingers of loved ones after the death of a family member. When a member of the family died, one finger joint would be removed from other family members and it's thought that this would ward off evil spirits as well as manifest the emotional pain in a physical way. Neither the smoke mummification nor the finger amputation are practiced today. However, some tribal elders still bear the shortened fingers, bearing witness to a practice not so long faded from memory. Number five, Suti. The practice of Suti was widespread in India and Hindu countries. And there is no nice way of putting this. It's the practice of burning a widow alive along with her deceased husband. Although it is widely banned today, it seems to have originated with a wife who voluntarily threw herself upon the funeral pyre of her husband. Clearly, a nearby man looked at his wife and said, would you do that? And she thought, hell no, but said, yes, dear, of course I would. And it soon became expected for a widow to display her heartbreak at the demise of her beloved by sacrificing herself. And those who didn't willingly do so were deemed a disgrace. It was considered voluntary which is, of course, a euphemism for one of two pretty crap choices, death on the pyre or disgrace and outcasting from the community. Number four, slaves and funerals. Similar to the suti ritual, slaves copped the short end of the stick when their owners died throughout history too. In ancient Rome, Greece, and the Nordic Viking nations, 
slaves would be expected to accompany the deceased on their journey in their afterlife, which really is the cherry on top of a pretty awful existence. I just want to take this one moment to say that I hope reincarnation is real and that they have a better life in the next one. Number three, sky burial. Buddhists are all about spiritual enlightenment and don't really consider the body to be particularly important. Basically, they couldn't care less about what happens to their earthly meat suit after they die. It is common Tibetan Buddhist practice to prioritize the living over the dead, and they often elect to allow their bodies to be eaten by wildlife, in particular carrion birds. And it is seen as quite appropriate that their final act would be to nourish another living being. The bodies of those who elect sky burial are left on mountainsides to be dealt with by nature. It is thought that around 80% of Tibetan Buddhists choose sky burial for their final arrangements. Similarly, the Zoroastrians allow wild animals to deal with the bodies of their dead also, however, for different reasons. Zoroastrians believe that everything the dead body touches is defiled, which probably comes from the fact that dead bodies putrefy pretty horribly and can carry disease. A dead body is cleansed with bull urine to send away bad spirits and loved ones are able to pay their respects but without touching the body. The body is then placed in the wilderness to be eaten by carrion animals such as vultures. And by the way, no, I didn't make up the word Zoroastrian, although I will admit it does sound like I may have. Zoroastrianism is actually one of the world's oldest continually practiced religions and dates back to the 5th century BC. It is considered that features of Zoroastrianism, such as judgment after death, heaven and hell, and free will, influenced many other religions and philosophical systems, including Greek, Islam, Christianity, and Buddhism. So yeah, I totally didn't make that up. Number two, self-mummification. So Kushin Butsu, or self-mummification, was practiced by Japanese Buddhists between the 11th and the 19th centuries. This astonishing process begins around 3,000 days prior to death, where they prepare their bodies by reducing all body fat and going on a strict diet of pine needles, yum, and resins and seeds. When ready, the monk will enter a stone room for meditation and stop all liquid intake, effectively dehydrating their body and shrinking their organs. The monk would die in this state of meditation and be naturally preserved with their skin intact. Number one, drive-through funerals. All of the previous entries on this list, no matter how strange, even burning wives and slaves on funeral pyres, were informed by traditions and cultural values. And I suppose this last one is a reflection of culture in some way. In Los Angeles, you can get a drive-through funeral and it's thought that these arose from gang warfare culture shootings in the 1980s and a general reluctance of mourners to stand exposed to rival guns in a cemetery. So you can pay your final respects to the dearly departed through the fairly dubious safety of your car window while you gawp at the open coffin and listen to a recording of the eulogy. Isn't that just wonderful? Okay, so thank you for joining me on this journey around the world of unusual death rituals. I've often thought that I'd like to be fed to sea creatures. 
after I die, of course, and I do have it on record that anyone who speaks at my funeral will have to take a big breath of helium first. Because, well, just because it'd be funny. Geez, I seriously hope I'm there to see that. Let me know if you're planning on any special arrangements for your final hurrah. Smash that like button for me because you know you want to and please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon and set notifications to all so you don't miss out on any of the strange and paranormal content on this channel. I'll see you next time.